Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Trina here with a new video for you! Welcome to the final season premiere of What If Deku Was Given the Six Pass Power. I just want to agree you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. Gentle video. The screens across the Japan web lit up for yet another video premiere from Villainy Reforged. Splendid day to all and welcome to the 100th installment of the Gentle Video series, the series where we announce the latest news concerning Villainy Reforged. As you all know, I'm Gentle Criminal, your community manager in these bright, shining times. But before we get into it today, we at Villainy Reforged express our immense gratitude towards you, the fans, for not only keeping up with us, but also for helping us reach the incredible milestone of 50 million subscribers on our main channel. As so, we will be holding a special event at our merch store to commemorate the grand occasion. With the code VFORGE50, you will all be able to save 50% on anything you order until the end of March. So don't waste the opportunity to obtain exclusive merchandise. Now that we have gone through that, we can sit down and relax. Get your fancy teacups ready because today, you are in for quite a special treat. Let's begin. The screen turned black right after, and a second later, a commemorative art was shown to the viewers to start the 50 million subs x 100 gentle video celebration. In it, all the members of Villainy Reforged were shown in dramatic poses that fit their individual personalities. Nobody was left out or forgotten. As in-studio picture slideshow then began playing for all to experience memories from the League of Villains at Reforged Villainy Studios were shared with the world for the first time. It included a multitude of pics of them all together as well as many individual ones that were taken at funny moments. In reality, this was a tearjerker for the members of the team. They had done so much since they had begun this new path in life, and now they were ready to share it with all those that supported them. Before, they had been outcasts of society, but now they were beloved by many, not just in Japan, but also in the rest of the globe. No heroes ever came to save them, so in a way, they saved themselves. The slideshow soon concluded with all the pictures shown throughout, reforming into a giant collage. After it, we could see the screen returning to a teary-eyed gentle criminal. Quite the spectacle to behold. Those memories between us will last forever. And now you guys are also part of it. Gentle criminal said as he wiped his eyes clean and looked directly at the camera once more. Regardless of this nostalgia trip, we must proceed with the announcements. Last week, we released the final expansion for Among You which added over 20 roles that the whole community voted for, as well as many new costumes to give the game a true send-off. And how was the response from you guys? Extremely positive. You guys loved it to no end and showed it off by making the game trend for over three days straight, as well as making it the number one game streamed on Twitching throughout the week. That's not all. You guys loved it so dearly that over a million videos of the final update were uploaded last time we checked, and it's still going higher. Once more, Villainy Reforged would like to extend its gratitude to you guys for supporting this game throughout the entirety of its life cycle. Because of it, we can now confirm to you all that we have begun production of a third game in the Among series. The next and final installment will be called Among Them, and it is expected to release early next year. More news of the game will be revealed in future gentle videos, so be sure to tune in. Indeed, the sus will consume us all. A quite elaborate video edit then showed itself as our fancy host vented into the unknown, the screen transforming into a bottomless void that led to a game trailer. In it, many new DLC characters for the hit game, Villain Fighters. A new batch of six characters was confirmed for the next month as they were all shown one after another. First, they started by revealing Sad Man's Parade twice, which made all his fans scream in excitement as the strongest version of their main would finally make it into the game. Then came Big Sis Mag, Overloaded Magnetism, a character that everyone had been waiting for ever since her base variant was nerfed beyond belief due to being too overpowered. This magnet would please all those that cried after their main had been rendered as non-viable in competitive tournaments. The third character was Kurogiri, Black Abyss, a teleporting character that could also send you away if he so pleased. His particular play style would intrigue some while annoying others. There was a reason why he hadn't been added prior. The fourth character was the one that made the chat explode as Himiko Toga, schoolgirl version, was swiftly shown off. This version of the character would be way different when compared to the original Himiko Toga, gamer Emoto variant, as this one wouldn't be a funny gag character, but instead, this new Toga would go wild with her knives and enter yandere mode if she ever went to low health. 
her model would be quite a bit bigger and older looking as it would reflect Toga's growth since the original version's release. Once more, Toga had caused all social media to break. She had conquered them again without even trying. The fifth character came as a surprise as Mr. Compress, Marble Sale, made its way into the video, showing off that this version was exclusively a zoner. His compressed storage was full, so he flung marbles at the opponent, and then whenever it was inside them would hit the enemy real hard. Depending on the inputs, he would throw specific objects out. The zoning section of the community became skeptical, skeptical about it, but they would give the character a chance whenever he was released. And the final character shown was Shigaraki, Fancy Suit, a character that would, in their own words, change the game forever. The release date was then set to April 15th, Everyone cheered as just over a month was all that awaited them to be able to play these new characters. But as the trailer ended, the screen was slashed in two and out of it appeared... You responded to my feelings! You walked together with me! My gentle! I love you! Was heard and a surge of pink energy engulfed the screen. Solving problems with brute force is not something I enjoy, but I will not let your love go to waste, la brava! Exclaimed gentle criminal while making a menacing walk toward the camera. He made his game debut known. He was the secret seventh character of the CLC. A seemingly unending wave of comments devastated the chat beyond repair, way beyond anything that Toga ever managed to do, as everyone made their hype known. The fact that their community manager had finally become a character made it a genuine reason to celebrate. Gentle Criminal Love Mode made the entire platform and website collapse shortly after. People noticed that he would also receive a limited edition figurine, so they tried to buy it before it sold out with unexpected, disastrous results. The verse trailer finally came to a close. More trailers were then shown for other games such as Quirk Survival 3, The Rise of the Land Kicking Crabs, Lover's Dose, Deadly Assault, Quirk Panic, Galactic Wars, Ketamine Unleashed, and most importantly, the final trailer for Reborn to Decay, with it finally receiving a release date. April 8th would be the day it finally came out. Shortly after, the screen went to black, and then the by now standard sections were played. And at the end of the video, we had a final message from the man himself, Tomura Shigaraki. Thank you all for joining us today on this very special occasion. Today we hit a milestone that not many have ever achieved, and for that, I'm grateful. Two plus years ago, when we inaugurated Villainy Reforged Studios, I thought that it would just be a small thing to enjoy with my friends, but it became something even greater thanks to each and every one of you. From the bottom of my quirk-filled heart, thank you for everything. But this is not the end. We at Villainy Reforged will not stop anytime soon, so be sure to tune in next time. We'll be happy to receive you all. And so, I can officially state that our 50 million subs x 100 gentle video celebration commences. Oh, and as a parting gift, I have one last thing to announce. A year ago, Toga's four-coma manga titled Bloody Knife Drops concluded its run, and ever since then, you guys have wondered something. Yes, it is happening! Bloody Knife Drops will receive an anime adaption made by Studio Meat. It will adapt the entire manga, so no need to worry about that either. There will also be extra surprise within it created by the original mangaka herself, Himiko Toga. So be sure to analyze every second of it. The anime will air sometime in the winter season, so be sure to get ready for it. Those drops may be yours if you don't. Everyone went wild once more. It was just too much to handle. This gentle video was way too much for the community to take on such short notice. Too many exciting things were upon them in the near future. Shortly after, Gentle Criminal closed off the video, and the rest was history. Meanwhile, as social media burned, Toga was getting ready to head out. She wanted to go eat some ramen tonight. Hey, where are you going, Togs? Shigaraki asked the young girl as she walked off past his office room. To eat some Toshikatsu ramen! The little vampire responded with a quick smile. She was even pointing towards it with both index fingers. Wanna come with me, Shigs? She then asked. Sorry, but I can't. I'm watching the timeline where the land-kicking crabs destroy the world. It's quite an interesting one. The symbol of fear and games replied, showing off a gateway of the realm between realities to the girl. Bah! No fair! You spend too much time on that realm of yours instead of with us! Toga complained with a clear pouty face. She really wanted him to come with her. Calm down for a bit. I promise that I'll go with you next time, and we'll even get the others to join in. What do you say? You better, because if you don't, I'll eat the remaining chocos while you're not looking. Himiko then playfully used this as a threat. Fine. Promise? Promise! She exclaimed while doing a pinky swear with her friend. Also, don't forget to get back before eight. We don't want to have to go look for you again. 
Shigaraki reminded her, much to her dismay. I'm 13 already. Those restrictions shouldn't be a thing for me anymore. The famous mangaka shouted, annoying that she was being treated like a little kid. No complaining from you, vampire queen. Once you're older, you'll understand why we do this to you, Shigi said as he patted her head, an action that made the girl feel even younger than she was. Ugh, fine, Toga whined as she accepted his terms once more. Soon after, she was outside the HQ, and she was still a bit mad even as she made her way to the small restaurant. Stupid Shigaraki, it was only one time. One time when he thinks that I'm just a small brat that needs to be looked out for like a baby. Stupid huge mall with maze-like corridors. The vampire queen screamed within herself as she kicked a pebble in the street. It just wasn't fair. This video is sponsored by Grubhub. With more than 3,000 store locations, Grubhub offers on-demand convenience delivery across the country. You can search for restaurants by cuisine or location, quickly order food from the menu, and track your order from the app, all hassle-free and without any extra charges. Grubhub charges less than other food delivery services, allowing you to get the best value for your money. With Grubhub Plus, you can get free delivery prices for 10 meals every month on orders of $12 or more for only $9.99 a month. That's not all. You can use the code AFF25 to save 25% off your first mobile order of $15 or more. This code is for a limited time. So again, get 25% off your first mobile order of $15 or more now if you use the code AFF25. Check the link in the description. Thank you again to Grubhub for sponsoring this video. Street robbers were surely less common after two years since villainy ceased to be profitable, right? No. Somehow, there were still many cases of this happening every day across the island of Japan, just like the one that Uraka and a friend had just stopped. Both girls had recently gotten out of their after-school clubs and were heading back home when they came across a kiosk being robbed. Uraka subdued two of them with the use of her erasing gun style, while the redhead used her quirk, Soul Symphony, to eliminate their ill intentions. Soon after, the police restrained the criminals, praising both Coruscant Academy students for a job well done. That was surely something, huh? Sayrin let out as she drank a bit of water to make her throat feel better. Just a side effect of using her quirk. Oh, tell me about it. Aravity responded, and then she looked at the time, jumping upon seeing it. But never mind then. Let's get going. The crepe stand will close in less than five minutes. Ochaka then exclaimed, grabbing her friend's hand. Both seniors ran as quickly as they could, and they were able to make it just in time. But as they were ready to order, something that left the rich girl annoyed happened. A limousine had just parked behind them, and out of it an old fellow came out. He even had a monocle. His posture was impeccable, and his aura outright screamed out elegance. Every step he took made his grandois mustache flow. Quite predictable, Lady and Monco, the elegant man stated, staring down at his master. But nevertheless, I am here to bring you home. Could you wait just a tad longer? If you haven't noticed, I'm doing something with a friend. Sayrin pointed out as Ochako waved back. Oh, yes. How could I miss such a clear scene transpiring before my very eyes? With sarcasm, he spoke, getting ready to escort the girl into the vehicle. Take it to go. Your parents are awaiting your return. The mustache man then ordered, his expression telling the young master that there would be no negotiations. Sayrin accepted that she wouldn't be able to get away with it this time, so she gave Aravity a hug. Sorry about this. You'll have to give me a rain check on this, the redhead said, holding her friend tightly. Ochako hugged her back. The situation had already happened many times before, so she understood what she felt. Don't sweat it. We'll get them next time, Uraka exclaimed with all her might, trying to cheer Sayrin from her down mood. Can't wait. See you tomorrow. See ya. Our real protagonist then saw as her fellow Senate chair entered the fancy vehicle and went off until it disappeared from view. Even with her upbringing, she's such a nice person, Araka thought as she felt the wind pick up around her. She sighed and then apologized to the crepe stand owner for making him wait so much, even more so as she no longer felt like ordering one. The loudest of noises was then heard as the girl's stomach growled like never before. It demanded something tasty. A tomato once more resurfaced, and she got even more embarrassed as the crepe guy offered her one for free after what had been heard. Uraka respectfully declined the free snack and ran off in the opposite direction. I guess it wouldn't hurt me to go eat something right now, she told herself as the many possibilities flooded her head. It would be so hard to choose. Corsican Academy, the most prestigious school in Japan, 
was a school that Uraraka had gone to for well over two years now. Her journey had been rough, but by the time her second year had commenced, she had become a part of the Senate Chairs, a highly prestigious group of students held with the highest regard within the organization. Only seven chairs were ever open for the students to take. This was, in all intentions, a ranking system among the elite, the seventh chair being the lowest rated, while the first chair was the best student in the entire academy. Little Uraka, with her hard work and effort, made it into the group and assumed the position of seventh Senate chair within the first term of her second year, becoming the fourth person to ever do so in such a quick manner. This didn't make her complacent, though, as she continued to strive for more, and by the beginning of her final year, she had risen to become the fifth Senate chair. Somewhere in the middle of all that, she got acquainted with Seiren and Mako, the third Senate chair of Coruscant Academy. Within their first proper interaction, they became friends. They were that compatible. The girl wasn't a snot-nosed brat like most of the others on the campus, and this made Ochako happy to talk to her. But in the back of her mind, she also considered her arrival. She wanted to reach her chair level to show that she too could be one of the very best. But this didn't last long. The more she got to hear about the future inheritor of the Enmako Empire, the less she felt like taking away her spot. The redhead had even become an officially licensed hero called Harmony in secret from her parents, which Uraraka admired at one point even participating alongside her to stop many minor street-level crimes. The chestnut-colored-haired girl couldn't have been more grateful to meet her, as that girl truly made her experience at the Academy a joy to grow through. But soon enough, this would also come to an end. Only two more weeks remained, and then the graduation ceremony would be held, meaning the conclusion of her journey was ever closer. It only bothered her a bit, but even then, she would miss all of it. This gift has been one of the best things to ever happen to her. She became an improved version of her past self in every way. Nobody could stop her now. If a gravity arrived, she was going to succeed. Quite some time had transpired as she walked. Night had taken over the Japanese skies. Uraka had finally settled on a place. She would eat at the famous restaurant called Toshikatsu Ramen. She had heard very good things about the place, and the funds given to Senate chairs would be more than able to cover a bowl or two. Going in the immediate change of atmosphere made her lightheaded, but also opened up the doors to her ever-roaring stomach. After taking a seat, she was soon able to order, and from a distance she could see a samurai preparing the ramen, being so over-the-top about it that he seemed more like an anime character than a real person. What a spectacle this place was, the girl thought. The smell alone had been otherworldly, but the in-store entertainment was a level above that. The red and golden bowl found its target as it slid across the table the gravity-defying girl grabbing it without a hint of hesitation and beginning her feast. Just like its predecessor, the next one did the same across the flat surface, making its way to the not-yet-satisfied hungry beast, grabbed within a moment and finished as if it were a shot. Sizzling, steamy oil gave birth to the girl's final dish. The fried tempura shrimp would soon accomplish their primary goal, to quench a student's indomitable craving frenzy. That was so good! The prestigious girl exclaimed for all to hear, she definitely had to come back to try the rest. The payment was made right after, and a nice tip was also included. Soon, a ravity would come back to ravage the place in the name of satisfaction. With a wave to the workers, she made her way outside, and there she came face to face with someone who had been secluded in a forgotten section of her mind. The bloodthirsty girl shouted upon seeing the girl she had resented for so long. It's Ochako Uraka! Ochako Urakura! Both teens pulled out their weapons to intimidate each other. A fight was surely about to ensue. Uraka transformed her base into her ever-trusty site, now looking quite hefty after the core upgrade. Melissa had been sending upgrades throughout the years, and by now this weapon was one to not mess with unless you were in the search for a death wish. As for Toga, her weapons upgrades had been relatively minimal, and even more so since she only had a single blade in hand. This one in particular could extend or contract by linked commands, storing blood within it. Her quirk, though, had evolved to another realm beyond its previous limits. The consumption of so many blood samples, thousands upon thousands, had led her to be able to store the quirks of those she ingested the blood out of. The more blood acquired, the more time she would be able to use the quirk. Upon depleting its reserve, the quirk would go away forever unless she would ingest a person's blood again. Quite a quirky arsenal she now had. The stare down only lasted for a bit until Toga retracted her knife, confusing Ochako quite a bit. Look, my feelings towards you have watered down since we last met. I don't feel like fighting you anymore, Himiko said, leaving all her pent-up emotions behind. You sure? No tricks? You're not playing with me now, right? No, it's true that I did hate you for making me small for quite a bit. But by now, 
I think I'm over it. There's no point looking back at those days when my life now is all I ever dreamed of having. I no longer have to hide my true self. No more mask for me to make. I can have all the blood I want without anyone looking down on me for it. I have fans. So many of them. And now also a family. They are a bunch of weirdos, but so am I. So I fit right in. Isn't that enough to be grateful for, Ochako? Toga asked after quite the soul-revealing info. I guess... Uraraka responded, deactivating the core and placing the base back into her book bag. So, are we good? No hard feelings? She then questioned. None, the vampire queen replied, embracing the now towering girl she once wanted to make her little sister. Uraraka didn't know if it was okay to return the gesture. How was it that this girl could forgive her when she couldn't forgive herself for leaving the blonde one in such a state? She had done so twice. She had given someone else double the close of something that had destroyed her world momentarily and the best justification she could give was that it was all in self-defense. The shorter one noticed the distressed senior and decided to make her feel better. Hey, want a drink? Soon enough, both of them found themselves leaning against a wall, drinking out of some cans they had just gotten out of a vending machine nearby. Silence encompassed the dark place until the knife-loving maniac noticed a froggy pin on Uraraka's book bag, which reminded her of something. So, how's Susu? She doing all right? No. She was one of Shigaraki's victims, Aravati coldly stated before taking a sip of her drink. Her name is in the memorial if you don't believe me. Something inside Himiko Toga shattered upon hearing that, but before she could let some of that out, Gigantomachia appeared to take her home. Toga, return home. Master wants it, the hulking brute said while reaching to grab his target. A blade then pierced the Goliath's arm. Toga was quite livid at the moment. The now enraged beast attacked them, destroying the wall, but the fifth senate chair had gotten both of them to safety thanks to her gravity quirk. The monster turned around to begin his rampage, and seeing this, the older girl reached into her book bag to pull out her base, but a mysterious green flash appeared above the quirk abomination, stunning all of them. A man coated in black then formed two green spiraling energy spears on his palms and crashed them against Machia from above, knocking him out, on the floor with that single technique. The hooded man then took off his hood, revealing messy green hair beneath, and then without turning, he asked, You okay, Raka? Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. If you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Now on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly if, you're inter lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fills your interest by joining the recruitment Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. And don't forget to check out my channel on Twitch live at Trina Do Heart, and also on YouTube and Twitter as well. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Bye!